I want to start out a little bit um, by talking about where the Ion Conference series is homed and what uh, the team behind it does. Um, so let me jump in there and uh, talk a little bit about the deployment and operationalization team at the Internet Society and, and a little background on the Internet Society itself to start off with as well. So, um, First of all, thanks for having us here. This is a really beautiful city. This was a picture I took um, just the other day up at Belfast Castle. If you haven't been up there yet, I highly recommend uh, taking the tour or getting a meal there. The Internet Society has the mission to promote the open development, evolution, and use of the Internet for the benefit of all people around the world. And the way we do that is by looking at kind of three pieces of the puzzle, technology, policy, and development. So development is, is looking at typically human capacity development. Um, Policy is obviously working with government regulators and other rule makers to ensure that they don't get in the way of the internet, typically. And then technology is obviously advancing new technologies. The Internet Society started out as just, was kind of formed by the IETF to be a secretariat for the IETF and has evolved since, since then over the years into what it is today, which is a, a truly global organization um, fighting for the internet um, across the world and again, for all people. Really, uh, you know, the old motto was the internet is for everyone and I think that still holds true. You can see a little bit of the scale here, and, and, and we continue to grow. Uh, global membership is free. If you want to just become a member of the Internet Society, you can sign up and, and become a member. And then many of the chapters have free memberships as well. Uh, you can see that there's a dot in the, in the UK. There is a, a UK chapter. Hmm? Just restart something, sorry. Ah, sure. The slides are the webcast. Ah, okay. I want to make sure the slides get to the webcast. No worries. So yes, yeah, so if you haven't looked into it, I highly recommend um, becoming a member. As I said, it's free and, and you'll get lots of information and, and things of that nature. Within the Internet Society, the team that's behind the IAN conference series is the deployment and operationalization team. Um, you can see here in the picture myself, Dan York, Megan Cruz, and Jan Zors. Um, me and Megan are here today, uh, and all four of us travel around, so you probably see us popping up at conferences uh, here and there. We're working on three projects that I think you'll see as I go through this kind of all interrelate with each other. It's kind of uh, a, a circle of, of, of work there. Um, the Deploy 360 program, um, working on bootstrapping best current operational practices, and then a project we launched this year we're calling Operators in the IETF. So starting with our flagship project, the Deploy 360 program, this is really aimed at taking IETF protocols, which are really written mainly for they explain how to, write, how to build protocols in software and hardware, right? So IETF RFCs really talk about how the protocol works on a very fundamental level, but not necessarily how to deploy it in an operational network. And so we try to bridge that gap with information from implementers. So folks who go out and, and deploy technologies up front, we try to gather the information from them and then share it with everyone else so that everyone can, can come on board. Uh, we're really focused on several topics, uh, IPv6, DNSSEC, securing BGP, TLS for applications, and anti-spoofing. Um, and we, we kind of go through those more and more. We add topics as we need to. We look at um, what Leslie used to call the broccoli technologies. Right? They're the ones that are good for you, but maybe you don't want to eat. We do this in four ways. We have a web portal, which is kind of the heart and soul of the project. We have a social media presence, which is really all about getting uh, feedback and communication with everyone. We do speaking engagements. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, we have the ION conferences, as we are here today. The web portal has content, again, across all of the topic areas that we cover, but also built for specific audiences. So if you're a network operator or a content provider or an internet exchange point operator, um, there's content there across all of our topics tailored, hopefully, to your needs. And then, of course, we also have a blog to keep uh, the news feed going, um, and then social media integration. We try to be on social media everywhere we can be. And again, this is really a communications feedback channel. We're really looking for two-way communication. We want to know if the resources we're publishing are helping you, uh, if there's stuff that you need to help, uh, you know, information you need, things you need to help deploy these technologies. Again, IPv6, DNSSEC, securing BGP, TLS in your applications, and, uh, and anti-spoofing. So we, we want to hear from you, and that's why we're on these social media channels. And then the other way we come and talk to people is with speaking engagements. So we'll talk at uh, many third-party events all over the world. Um, here's a list of a few of them that we've been to recently. Um, but this, you know, it, it, the list, even for this year, for just myself, is, is too long to put on a slide. In addition to those speaking engagements at other people's events, we also obviously hold the ION conferences. Uh, again, thank you for being here today. 
we try to do three to four events every year, and we co-locate, like we did this time with, with UK and off, in order to reach different audiences. So we move around different continents, different areas of the world, and also different audiences through the conference we co-locate with. Really trying to get the, again get the information that we're putting together out to as many people as possible, get these technologies deployed as quickly as possible, as well as collecting information from you. Our next steps are always to be adding more content. We're still fairly young. We've really only been doing this for a couple, two and a half years or so. So we're building up the resource pages. Um, we want to actively engage with with all the industry professionals and make sure that we're tuning this exactly to what you need. Right? We want to take your feedback and give you the tools and resources that you need to deploy these technologies. We're also working on, this year, having a real hard push towards um, translating our materials out of English into other languages so that we can get to a, a much wider audience that way, and always increasing our blogging and social media, just constantly building that feedback loop and, and communication with, with the communities. We'd like to invite you to get involved. Um, the first thing you can do is just check out the site, internetsociety.org slash deploy360, is where you can find all of uh, the blog and the resources and everything else. And we'd really like to see those of you who have gone out and deployed IPv6 or DNSSEC or have you know, secured your BGP, put in anti-spoofing measures, um, deployed TLS in your applications, we'd really like to get content from you back on how you did it, things you ran into, problems you had, and, uh, and put those up as resources, obviously attributing you and, and giving you credit where that's due, uh, as well as defining new features. Right? Is there something else we could be doing to help move the needle on these deployment initiatives? You can contact us. Uh, the email address is there, deploy360 at istock.org. Fairly simple. The next piece of this I want to talk about is uh, BCOP, Best Current Operational Practices. Um, a BCOP, as, as envisioned here, is a living document that describes the best current way to do something in your network, right? So some, some kind of operational piece of information. Um, we want these to be living documents, meaning that they get vetted periodically, that the community agrees that this is the best way to do something, um, with caveats, of course. We try to apply the 80 20 rule. So it's not going to meet every corner case, but we want Really, it's the things that you know how to do that we want to document and write down. So right now, that knowledge is kind of tribal. Um, there's a lot of folks who know, you know a lot about DNS or know a lot about uh, routing, maybe know a lot about MPLS, but that isn't really homogenized across the world and even within, within individual countries and within individual co companies. Um, there's things that some people find as common sense, and so they don't explain it to other people, but really it's something that is needed to be known by a wider audience. Um, people come to these conferences, like you came off, and give presentations. Um, but those presentations kind of get lost. They, they are archived a lot of times. Sometimes there's video available, sometimes there's not. Um, there's mailing lists where people ask the same questions over and over again every couple of years, right? The same questions come back up. And what we'd really like to see is putting that together in an open, transparent, bottom-up and community-led process to actually document this and find one home for all of these, all these pieces of information, all these things that you might need to know if you were starting up a new ISP or an internet exchange point or you know, even just setting up your enterprise network. Because we think that if everyone understood how to best run a network, that uh, the internet would run a lot better for everyone. Right? So you know, anti-spoofing, for an example. If we actually all did anti-spoofing measures, um, a lot of the DDoS stuff would go away. Right? We just heard earlier today that you know, a lot of these attacks or are, are mis misconfigurations and things are coming in even on RFC 1918 address space, which you know, is ridiculous that, that that's coming across the internet. So um, this isn't really an ISOC-specific project, but it's something we're trying to um, foster and bootstrap and trying to, to drive forward. So it's happening around the world. Um, Africa, Europe, Latin America, and North America as, as kind of regions of the world have all started major regional efforts. And there's some local efforts happening as well um, in Japan and in Poland. And uh, there's, a, there's a link here to go and learn more about all of those regions and what they're doing and how to get involved. There's a number of documents currently in progress in some of the regions, so some of the more the, the, BCOP efforts that have been stood up and are a little bit more formal now are starting to write documents. And here's a list of some of them. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, potential topics for additional topics that we're collecting. If you go to this link here, um, you can find many more topics that have been identified by the community as things that maybe want to be written. And so, of course, you know, our next steps here are to continue to bootstrap these new efforts as needed. Right? We want to help get these things going and get them started. Uh, we want to help get uh, new BCOP documents written. And really, we're looking at low-hanging fruit. Again, a lot of this is something that you might think is, is just common sense. And if you write it down, it's actually going to be of great benefit to a lot of people. Um, so we wanted, and, then, and then there may be a need for, for global coordination, right? So right now, it's happening regionally, which I think works well. As far as time zones and language and just culture, it kind of makes sense to work with folks who are close to you geographically. But long term, I think these BCOPs will probably be a global effort because, again, it's the internet, right? And it should work kind of the same pretty much everywhere you go. 
So you can jump in and, and join this effort as well. This is another place where you can get in and kind of get some recognition, put your name on a document, um, get going, uh, offer new ideas for drafts, kick off a new document yourself, start a regional or, or local BCOP effort, and um, we'd love to, to give you more information if you want to email us and, and go from there. And the third project I want to talk to is kind of closing the loop. So if you saw Deploy360 is really all about taking information from the IETF and getting it to operators, right? And the BCOP project is about operators talking to each other. Operators in the ITF is about getting feedback back into the ITF from the operators. Um, and that happens today, but maybe not to as great an extent as it could. Right? We really want to see um, operational realities informing IETF standards and protocols. So as things come out of the ITF, it'd be great if they were really deployable day one, rather than having to kind of iterate back and forth and say, oh, well, you know, we got this protocol. It doesn't really work for us in some ways. Um, we need to you know, fix it up. There's lots of examples of that happening. I mean, obviously, the ITF's working quite well. The internet runs pretty smoothly as, as, as things go. Um, but we're always looking for improvement. And that's really what this is about. We started at the beginning of this year with a survey to operators. Um, we saw several hundred respondents come back and give us information on what they saw as barriers to entry into their participation in the ITF. Um, most of the folks who responded were primarily technical in their roles. Um, most of them knew what the IETF was, what it does, uh, but didn't really know how to participate. And a very strong majority said they're interested in the IETF, they find the content relevant, they believe it's important to their jobs, but they just don't have enough time to participate. We also saw a number of folks who said, um, you know, they, so like I said, more than half don't participate. Only about 30% are actually participating on mailing lists from what we saw, in, again, of, of the survey respondents. Although more than half believe that operator input is welcome, and quite a bit more than half said that they are not relying on their vendors to represent them. So if you're not relying on your vendors to represent you, and you're not going, but you think it's relevant, there's a gap there, right? How, how does this work together? Um, what we really want to see is, is how to close that gap, right? We're trying to find solutions to bring more operator input. Not necessarily everyone coming to the IETF meetings, or even everyone getting on IETF mailing lists, but getting that input into the IETF. So, how do we do that, right? Our next steps are to really dig into the survey results. We're doing that right now. We want to analyze and synthesize these survey results, um, all the feedback we've gotten. We've collected feedback. And uh, we're going to put that all together into an internet draft and get that out um, so that people can look at it and, and take a look. We, we plan to have potential solutions in there. As we've asked these questions of what are the problems, a lot of people have stepped up and said, hey, I have an idea for solutions. And we've collected all that information. And we're going to put it in. I think those kind of fall into three buckets, right? There's things that. Operator groups, like UKNOF, for example, and operators themselves can do to help provide more input back into the ITF. There's obviously going to be things that the ITF may be able to change to make it easier to receive that input. And then um, lastly, there'll probably be a few things that the Internet Society itself can do to help facilitate all of this communication. Um, so with that, that's what the deployment, operation, deployment and operationalization team does. And uh, that's a big part of what's behind these ION conferences and why we're here today. So I want to thank you. Um, and I'll briefly, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Or if not, I'll be around the rest of the day and you can grab me. All right. If not, um, I'd like to bring uh, Natalie up to talk about uh, IPv6 since World uh, Launch Day and uh, where are we now. <laughs>